Hey guys, this is Joe at Saint, along with my sidekick, Frankensleeve, coming at you with my dirty kitchen. This is my real kitchen. It's not exactly clean, it's not exactly neat, it's not exactly pretty, but I cook a lot of things in here that I enjoy eating. Some, usually it's a real simple dish that is hearty and filling, and I'm hoping to pass along some of the recipes to you. This is a spaghetti squash. I don't know if you, if y'all have ever tried them. I like them a lot. Uh, spaghetti squash are starting to come into season in Texas. This is about a five pound spaghetti squash. Uh, I bought some two and three pounders, and it, when I cooked it, it just there was just virtually nothing left inside of it. It wasn't worth the the money I spent because there was literally just a few tablespoons of spaghetti strands inside. But a five pounder, this one's going to have at least two pounds of spaghetti strands in it. So I would advise anybody who wants to try a spaghetti squash, get a, get a, the, one of the larger ones. Look for ones that are bright yellow, or at least turning bright yellow. They are very, very hard to cut open, so be prepared to, to work on these. It's, it's harder to break open than a watermelon to me. But... uh I do like them a lot. I'm going to be switching from putting lentils with my pork loin or pork roast to using chopped up spaghetti squash. I just put it in the microwave for about 20 minutes for each half and cover it in cellophane. That's it. I just steam it in the microwave. And then I scrape out the insides, chop it up as fine as I can, and just mix it in with my, with my pork roast. Okay, guys. I just want to show you what I go through in order to split a... Spaghetti squash. The bigger they are, the harder they are to split. It's like popping open a watermelon. So some of the tools I use, I have the biggest knife that I can find. Let's see if I can get them up here. So I want to. I like my knife to be longer than the spaghetti squash. And I have my little rubber-headed mallet. I think I picked this up at Walmart or maybe even Harbor Freight. But it comes in handy. Uh, optional equipment. Uh, tequila. That's optional. You don't have to, but it does enhance the experience. Although the danger factor does increase exponentially. My uh, adobo seasoning, op again, optional. Craft uh, thick and spicy barbecue sauce. I don't know why that's out here because I don't use it. It's just been sitting there for a while. Also optional is just for looks, I guess. So let me split this thing open. I try to <clears throat> center this up as best I can on the uh, spaghetti squash. It has a tendency to have a spot where it wants to sit, so I don't fight it. I let it sit where it wants to sit. I try to get it on the thickest part where the, di the diameter is going to be the thickest, and the knife is going to tend to want to turn, tilt one way or the other as I start splitting it, so it's very difficult to make a clean, even, straight split, but I'm going to try. And right now it's wanting to turn already. I don't know if you can see that, but the, the blade has tilted a bit. But I'm going to try to torque it back the other direction to try to minimize the split so that each half is, is as equal in thickness as possible. But it's not working too well. So sometimes you've got to take what you can get. And at this point, the blade tip is out here, so I can't really hammer on that. But if you just keep hammering lightly, just not just let the let it fall. You don't have to actually put any effort into it. It will slowly tap its way through. And as you can see, I missed the center of the core here while I wanted to hit it. So one side is going to definitely be thicker than the other. So it's going to require more cooking. So it helps to have a knife that has the tang that goes that is one piece. Instead of just having a little teeny tang here and then having just handle. So this is a one-piece blade. So it does have the extra strength all the way to the end of the handle being one piece. Otherwise, I'd be more wary about hammering on the handle. If I know that I'm hitting the metal of the blade. I'm not actually hitting the handles. I'm going to slide this forward a bit.
hopefully it's still in camera. I'll let it slide a bit. And there you go. You can see how goopy it looks inside. It's actually pretty dry. I mean, it is it is wet, moist, but it's not. And it's a little bit slippery, but it is not. I guess a creepy feeling. And I tend to save these seeds. I keep trying to grow my own spaghetti squash because during the height of summer, I'm eating one of these a week or more, and they get quite expensive because they're about a buck. 25 buck 50 a pound and a five pound one is about six dollars i know i'm cheap <laughs> but it's also fun to grow your own food especially if you can just plant these seeds and just walk away and let them grow on their own and they just produce so so far i've been able to grow the plants but they've all died before they could flower and produce fruit and that i think is because i planted them too late in the year i started out in the like august end of august end of September last year, so there wasn't enough rain to sustain them, and the temperatures weren't right, and there probably wasn't enough bugs to pollinate the flowers, being that it was uh, winter was coming on pretty quick. So that's it. Next step is to put each one of these halves one at a time into the microwave, cover it with cellophane. I completely cover it and try to lock in as much of the steam as possible so that nothing, no steam escapes. That usually means just one full wrap around this, and then I flatten out and scrunch up the leftover trying to make sure that the uh, cling wrap is completely sealed as possible. Something like this, as big as this one is, I would start out with 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I usually take a fork like this, a regular fork, and puncture that this is the, the toughest part. As you get closer to the skin, the, the strands go away and the, the meat becomes harder. So when I can push a fork in there and it just slides in like warm butter and pull it back out, I know it's done. Sometimes I clean the seeds out, the goop out the center, and sometimes I don't before I steam it. It doesn't make a difference. It does make it a little bit more difficult to get all these strands out because these strands here are not easy. You can eat them, I guess, but they don't taste good and they don't, they're, they're very chewy and tough. So I usually clean all this stuff out and scrape it out completely smooth inside as much as I can without uh, removing any of the meat. So just taking a regular spoon, a tablespoon or bigger, is easy, is easy enough to use to cut these out. Let me grab one right quick and show you. It just takes a couple of seconds and you can start scraping away. You just That's all there is to it. You just pull the strands Keep scraping, keep scraping, keep scraping. When you, when you think you've done enough, scrape some more because there will always be a few little strands left in there. No big deal. I will spit them out as I'm eating them, but I try to get it as clean as possible. And also I like saving all these seeds, like I said. So if you scrape it now, you can save the seeds. If you wait till after it's cooked, well, the seeds aren't going to be any value. And they will be cooked and dead, and you can't reuse them. So... Just want to show you that little part right there. I'm going to stop now, turn off the camera, and go cook this thing and prepare my food for the rest of the week. Okay, here's the finished product. Uh, just to give you an idea of how clean, when I say clean them out, how clean I clean them. I don't mind having a few little strands left in there. I will just chomp on through them, and while I'm eating, I can see my the tools I tried, I hadn't these out in a while and I'd kind of forgotten what it takes to scrape them out so tried using my little paring knife that didn't work as well for cutting the strands it just kind of slid past them uh, this spoon was working pretty good for the initial scrape out and got everything kind of clumped together Let's see what I wound up working the best for me was a pair of tongs once I got the stuff in a ball all the strands into, the, into a ball I started grabbing it and just pulling it out just yanking the stuff out, and it worked out pretty well using these. I think I got these at Sam's Club, like two for four dollars or four for seven dollars, something like that. And so just plain old salad tongs, no big deal, no big thing. So the next step is to cover them in cellophane. And oh yeah, I wanted to show you the seeds. These seeds that were most of them that came out, they came out pretty easy. Uh, I'm going to let them dry out. They're real wet and sticky right now. I'm going to leave them open air and let them dry out. And then once they're dried, they're ready for planting. I 
basically you just I cut a dig a three or four inch deep hole, plant four or five in a in a mound kind of shape, move down two feet, plant four or five more the same way, and just cover them all up with dirt, keep them watered, and you'll have multiple you know three or four out of the five will actually sp sprout, and you'll have plants. And after about a week or two, when they've gotten up to be a foot or so tall, I pair out the weaker ones, the ones that aren't growing as well in the mounds, I pair them down to, to just one or two out of the five I planted. That way I get the strongest plants with the most likely chance of fruiting and surviving the longest. So yeah, let's see how they work out this summer. I'll be planting these probably next week. Okay, here's the tricky part, not from a cooking standpoint, but from a camera standpoint, because this is where I have to give up control of my camera to be able to use both hands. So this is my cling wrap. Uh, my most important thing when I'm doing this is to make sure that I know you probably can't see this without getting a without me getting a reflection on it. But basically, I want to cover the entire top of the squash so that the wrap is sealed completely around the top. And I want the steam to stay sealed in right there. So whatever else the wrap does, I don't care. Just as long as I have a good firm seal, it's not going to come off. And I'm shaking the camera. <laughs> <laughs> by tapping on the on the squash so this may get a bit shaky uh, I may have to take this off let me get a pair of scissors that's it a pair of scissors because I pulled off enough cling wrap it's all the way out here so it's enough to go completely around the spaghetti squash I believe so I'm going to reduce the shakiness simply by using my scissors I never have been very good at using the the cutting edge on these little boxes to begin with. So let me gently do this. I'm doing it gently only because I don't want to shake the camera or get off camera with this. And you can see as I'm rolling it over, this is actually enough to cover all the way around and overlap the the first piece. So this, even though it's very difficult to see on camera, this is actually overlapping the other side of the wrap. So that's it. That's the whole thing. The ends have a little bit of gap in them, but because this this skin is so thick and tough, it does not matter. Steam is not going to get out through there. It's going to have to penetrate a good inch of spaghetti squash meat before it ever gets to the skin. With I mean, as far as the steam goes. So that's it. This one is is the heavier, bigger side. So I'm thinking 15 minutes because it's it is thicker overall bigger and heavier than the other half. So I figure 15 minutes for this one, I'll poke it with a fork and see if it comes out uh, easy, easy and clean. And if it feels like I have any type of uh, resistance. And the other one, which is just a, a hair thinner, I mean, it's probably about a half an inch thinner as far as tallness. I'll probably put it in there for 12 minutes and see where it goes from there. Because you can always turn the microwave back on. So let's put this sucker in the microwave set it for 15 minutes okay so there he is in the microwave I'm gonna set the timer if I can I maybe may have to close the door to set the timer power levels full and 15 minutes and I have a love-hate relationship with this microwave because it does a great job it was really inexpensive but at the same time that beeping noise it makes is so loud it just like it's like sticking an ice pick in my ears i really hate it so i would want to buy my next microwave is going to have a volume control or a mute button one or the other because i'm really tired of this beeping so here we go i would show you the inside except the uh the bulb burned out a few months after i got this and i never have taken it apart to to replace the bulb so I'll be back in 15 minutes. We'll check it out. Okay, this is the 15-minute uh, mark. Pull out my trusty pokey thing. My, uh, my ice pick. And make sure you penetrate the plastic wrap thoroughly because it can act, if you're not watching, it can act like a resistance and you think your squash is not done, but it really is. But it just slides right in with no resistance whatsoever. It's just like pushing into hot butter. And I feel it hit the skin on the other side. 
So it's completely cooked, 15 minutes. Probably could have got away with 12 or 13 minutes, maybe 14 minutes, but it didn't. doesn't look like it's overcooked. The reflection's pretty terrible. I turned the light off, so maybe I can see a little better, but you can see, it's, you can see little tiny cracks on the inner edge where the water has boiled out and it shrank. So let me put this on pause and get this thing out here. And be careful because these things are extremely hot. They hold heat like crazy. And this is just finished cooking. Okay, so there it is. Unwrapped a little bit. It's still extremely, extremely hot. It's only been a minute or two since the timer went off, indicating that it was cooked. You can see the little spots on there where the, the inside is dried because of the, or contracted because of the water boiling out of it and you start peeling this off you can see it just kind of flakes out of there in long strings and you can go right to the skin if this thing is thoroughly cooked and cooked to tenderness you can literally take a fork and just go out to the edge here and just literally peel the meat away from the outer skin and that's what I'll do. I'll let this thing cool off for another 10 minutes or so so that I can actually handle it a little bit better and I will just simply flake it. Flake it and flake it and flake it just and I and I literally go down right there you can hear that. That is the outside skin. I mean I, I get every bit of this out of here that I can because it all tastes good all the way down to the skin. There's not a rind the way a watermelon has a rind where there's a red meat and white where it loses all its flavor and gets bitter or just doesn't taste sweet. This you can eat all the way out to the skin, and I do. Even the parts that become solid and less string-like. So there you go. Completely cooked. You can chop it up. You can eat it with just a little salt and pepper on it. You can mix. I usually mix it in with my pulled pork. I will chop up or shred pork, and I will blend this into it. It adds a, a lot of body to the to the mixture. Adds a little bit of sweetness as long as you don't put more spaghetti than squash than you put in meat. Usually mine is 75% meat, 25% squash, depending on how much squash I have. So it may wind up being a little bit less of the squash in the mixture. But it does add fiber. It's very low calorie, adds a little bit of sweetness, and it does take on the flavors of whatever you put in. So don't think that this, by blending this into a casserole or any other kind of meat dish, that it's going to overwhelm the flavor. It's going to complement the flavor and it will take on some of the flavor of the of the meat. So that's about it for now. This is Joe Saint signing out from VSG Land and saying keep pipping that sleeve.